So this might be that first actually interesting map video I've ever done because it's actually a map that was never officially released. Um, I've been floating on the internet for years, but only recently has came to light. Um, a little bit of history is that obviously, you know, Deathmatch Classic came out. Um, but it, what happened was Valve at one point was working on a version of the Quake Mod 3 Wave or 3 Wave Capture the Flag, which I haven't played it just like Quake Team Fortress. But it was a very popular mod for the original Quake. Um, came out around the same time, and both of those games kind of you know popularized like you know capture the flag and more team based based gameplay and stuff like that. Um, the thing is, is that Valve actually went and not only did they make just like the three wave mode, like they basically went and created a proper capture the flag. They took a bunch of not just the obviously they took the like you know the three wave maps. That the original authors, or author, I can't remember exactly who did it, made for 3-Wave. They ported the, that over to Deathmatch Classic. But they also went and ported some other Quake maps. And like, gave them proper, like, Capture the Flag support and all that. Which I find weird, because and basically there there's far more maps in this unreleased, like, you know, 3-Wave mod. Than there are officially in the game. Um, we can't be certain when it was supposed to come out. I've seen people say it was supposed to come out in 2001. But my problem with that is, is that the base game came out in 2001. This came, the mod itself with five maps came out in 2001. Then they had put out DC DM5 and the Venom map. I can't remember the exact name. PCS3, I can't remember now. Um, those came out in September. So I almost want to say um, if it was supposed to come out in 2001, it might have been like really late or even like, you know, I want to say early 2002, we don't know. I've never really seen anyone give concrete information. And for whatever reason, they just, they just they never released this. They, they did all this work and just did nothing with it. Didn't even announce it. Um, and then in 2003, the, the very infamous Half-Life 2 beta leak came out. And it wasn't just Half-Life 2 stuff. That's just the most famous thing about it. But the three-wave, the files for three-wave like DMC were in there. Um, but nobody really paid much attention to it. Like, there was acknowledgement of it. I've seen posts in, like, 2011 talking about it. It was there, but, you know, no one really paid any mind. It wasn't until 2016 that someone, uh, actually went, who was well-versed with how the gold source engine works, and actually created a sort of, uh, worked together a functional version of 3-Wave Capture the Flag, so you can actually play it with, like, the Capture the Flag and proper mechanics and everything. I'm not gonna be showing you that because there's no bot support. It's as simple as that. I, It would basically just be me walking around by myself. It's the same reason I'm not doing the capture the flag mode and opposing force, unfortunately. I, it's not really showing off a map if I'm just walking. You can sort of get the feel for a map if you're walking around it empty, but, you know, are you really getting the experience of even, like, artificial human beings? You're getting a more of an actual proper experience. However, because it's a mod of Deathmatch Classic... These maps pretty much work flawlessly in, you know, Deathmatch Classic here. To, to varying degrees, um, I'm gonna, I think. Because I've only tested two so far. The second one I tested is mostly complete, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, I know this is a long ass introduction. So, yeah, if you're interested, I don't think I'll provide the links to any of these fucking, uh, the three-way mod itself, just because I don't know, I still don't know what Valve stance on this stuff is. It's kind of leaked out there. I, I'm kind of feel like da I'm in danger just making these videos. So if I, d I disappear off the face of the internet, you'll know why at some point. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I I'm gonna shut the hell up and talk about the Slipgate Complex here, which was the first, which was E1M1 in the Quake, and you know it's famous. F for being the first level in that game, basically outside the intro, so they they made they made it a capture the flag map. You like in three wave, you could play this and there'd be flags and everything, um, and it actually works. That map is fully playable. It's as far as I can tell, it's done. Um, obviously, I can't show you here, but it works just fine as a deathmatch map. So yeah, you basically if you t take the three wave well, like you know texture wad, which is just one file and put it in deathmatch classic, this map works perfectly. Yeah, I'm just, I'm going to shut the hell up and go into the map now. So this map isn't actually called, first of all, DC, D DMC, DM1. It was actually called the Slipgate Complex. All the maps came, unlike in Deathmatch Classic, all the maps are just named after the original map. Um, I just renamed it because I'm a freak for, like, you know, kind of consistency 
and it made me feel good about myself. So yeah, it's it, I'm I called it D, DMC DM one because I'm an idiot. Or E one M one. I'm fucking stupid. Never mind. If it was DM one, it would be the bad place. I'm going off topic. So again, since this is based off a of well known single player level, let's actually go in order here. Um, go back up. I think you actually have to hit that. I can't remember. Uh, so, um, Slipgate Complex was designed by that there John Romero guy, and in development it was called JR Base 1, because, you know, that was the first attempt at a base. Yeah, you can see the bots, when they're not shooting each other, don't really know what's going on. So, it is pretty much 100% faithful to the original map. Uh, obviously the textures are different, and some of the aesthetics are different, but this is basically the Slipgate Complex. Right down to this secret over here, actually. Check this out. Fucking mouse is being a piece of shit. Um, something I just want to bring up while I'm <sighs> dicking around here is that, um, John Romero des uh, designed this map to really take advantage of the new Quake feel like features, so that's why it has a lot of, that's why this whole open area exists. When he was designing the map, you just started out in that outside area there. Anyway, I'm getting off topic here, so yeah. In the original, there was a box of shotgun shells, and there's a box of shotgun shells there. Uh, this is a remnant of the three-wave mode, though. Because, you know, like, one team spawns here. And there's, like, all the weapons you can use against the other team. Obviously, there's no flag. The flag is here normally, I think. Um, but, you know, the, the like, flag won't spawn here. But there you go. The weapons are all here. Uh, you can come over here and uh, you get some more armor. This actually leads into a secret that was in the original map. Again, it's been preserved faithfully. Um, yeah, when you started, when he started working on this map, it was just here. You started here, but he wanted to showcase more detailed roofs and like let the player jump around more and like show off the actual proper 3d technology same reason this is here this bridge is here the water's here it was all to get the player accustomed to like the new game so you yeah, grab a double barrel shotgun there again all very faithful grab a health here um it's kind of weird without the weird scrolling skies that quake has but whatever so yeah come down here like it's pointless talking about this is one of those maps that's kind of pointless to talk about because everyone's already talked about it to death Come here, and there is a mega health here, and there is a way to get to the other ba like base. This is where the other team spawns in now. This was the end of the level originally, but now it's the other enemy's base. And as you can see, you can hit that and fall through. You can't normally fall through in the original Quake map, but there you go. I'm going off topic now, because that doofus pushed me. Well, I'll show you how to get to this hidden area here anyway, later. In this hidden area, grab a gr grenade launcher, take this teleporter, where normally here is a pentagram of protection... Or maybe it's a lambda, lambda protection now. I don't know what the hell you want to call it. But, you know, it's all my plans have been foiled because the bots have fucking dicked me. So that, that sucks. Uh, anyway, if you were to come here, maybe the mega health's there. The mega health is not there. There's a mega health here, I swear to God. Uh, you can come this way and you can take an elevator up. So you can sneak. Um, this works as a capture the flag map because both people can kind of sneak up. Though I swear this elevator was faster in the original Quake version. So I could be wrong, though. There's all the supplies back. So you can see, yeah. They're trying to keep the player teams loaded up so you have your base of operations. I should mention, too, that in 3-Wave, you'd have a grappling hook. You don't got that here, but, you know, the map wasn't designed with that in mind anyway, so I don't think it really matters too much. Anyway, there's explosive barrels here normally that you shoot and will just kill everything within, like, you know, a million mile radius. But someone's obviously already taken the initiative. So, yeah, this secret's been preserved, too. If you shoot this, this raises up and you can go through here. And you hit that and you can get a, like, you know... Quad damage, which is cool, and you can get out to this corridor here. Always love that secret. Um, so let's go back this way. It's pretty open here. You know, a lot of action, I'd imagine. Take this elevator up here, and you know, the funny thing is, it's already been activated, but he, they even preserved the little light thing that goes on here. This isn't open at first. You have to actually, like, you know, walk through, and, like, this room is dark, and then the lights go, or the room is somewhat lit, and then it goes dark, and then this opens up, and there's, like, nails there. So, you know, that's funny how, like, accurate this is to the original. Again, they preserve this secret here, where you can get another double layer shotgun. Uh, this starts open. That's one of the few things they've changed here, is that normally you have to shoot something that, like, you know... Oh, no, you press a switch in the original Quake version to open this up, but obviously they didn't want to do that. And you gotta be careful, because this is actually gonna damage you. It's not like the lava in DMDC5, or DCDM5. Uh, switches are gone here, and it's already all the lights are activated, but it's not a big deal. One of my favorite rooms really showing off what John Romero wanted to, like, do. Showing off, like, how, you know, that's actual proper 3D. Uh, so you can get up here. This secret uh, is like, just like it is in the original. You gotta jump on here. I feel it's a little bit harder to do here. Just the movement's different enough. But you can grab another mega health here. 
That's always fun. Grab another super nail gun. And it's already been used up with the bio suits here. Which is interesting because it's actually just the HEV suit from Half-Life. But it functions like the bio suit does in Quake. Never actually used in any of the actual Deathmatch Classic maps. But yeah. I mean, it's kind of pointless because unlike in uh, Quake, this water does not hurt you. This is... I guess it's supposed to be slime in the original, but yeah, this doesn't hurt you at all. So, I, I don't even know why it's there anymore. Again, I think... I want to say that it was done just for accuracy, but I also want to say that maybe Valve actually had the access to the original raw map files. Because I, I've read somewhere that apparently these the Deathmatch Classic was done with, like, you know, it's kind of blessing. So maybe it was cool with them. Like, yeah, here's our map files. Go ahead and, like, you know, do what you will. Hey, it's the Pentagram Protection. Epic. And his guy's gonna have a little rave here. The bot, Parabot can't quite figure out how secrets work, so I'll help him there. He's gonna grab the. He's gonna grab the quad damage. That's. He, he's thinking. He is thinking. Anyway, that's good. Oh, I'm saying something apparently. Yeah. Was did. W on the WASD. Wow. Anyway, that's cool. Um. And yeah, we'll come back this way now. And you know, this will lead you to the blue base. You're not supposed to be able to fall through here, so me doing that a moment ago was a fluke. Because in the original Quake map, no matter what you do, but I think this might be the exception here. I don't know. It's weird. You know, it's it's just weird. It's just weird. Obviously, the teleporter's not going to work because, I mean, E1, M2 is in Deathmatch Classic, but, you know, it's not really a single-player thing. You know, the, the entrances and the exits were taken out there, but I don't really think I need to be telling you this. Uh, yeah. Um, this was, uh, this wasn't one of the more popular deathmatch maps in Quake, but I've actually always been kind of partial to it. It's just the way it plays. And this has nothing to do with me actually having created, like, you know, porting over the original Quake map into Half-Life. It's got, or Team Fortress Classic, got nothing to do with that. Um, yeah, I just, I always thought it actually worked kind of well. Um, you know, it's obviously not going to be as good as the, like, you know, E1, M2 or some of the other, like, the actual deathmatch maps, but I think it works great, and if you've never tried E1, M1 in deathmatch and Quake, maybe you should do that. This is a weird narration I got going on here. You know, it's a thought that's been occurring to me as I've done these, like, Half-Life and, like, you know, related game map videos and all that. Here's the bio suit, by the way. Yeah, see? It's just the HEV suit. And they gave it a new sound and everything. It's so weird. Um, you know, how much, like, do all these games pay, to, like, you know, have, like, Quake, like, relationships, you know? Because, you know, obviously it goes without saying the Gold Source engine was based off of the Quake engine. You know, that just kind of, it is, everyone knows that. By the way, here's the exploding boxes, too. As you can see, that does a shit ton of damage. That was so powerful, it flung me right the fuck back up there. Absolutely insane. Do you see me, doofus? Did I turn peace mode off? Or maybe they, oh, no, there we go. Parabot doesn't quite understand that when I have the pentagram on here, like, you can't do shit against me. But anyway, so, like, not only does, like, you know, you know, the gold source engine derive from the Quake engine, but, you know, Half-Life, you know, like, you know, people... What was I gonna say, actually? I knew, Like, you know, Snark Pit was based off a map that Dario Casali made for Quake. So, you know, that that's something. Team Fortress Classic is a remake of a, like, you know, a popular Quake map. Plays much more like Quake than Half-Life does. You know, it has a lot of, like, similarities there. Um, and, you know, even has some maps that were in Quake. Like, you know, the Quake Team, like, Fortress, like, you know, Two Fort. And they have opposing force and, like, you know, that, like, you won. Remember, like, Candy Base was literally, like, you know, a Quake map at 1.2. And, like, you know, stuff like that. And I think there might have been even one more that was directly based off a Quake map. I can't remember off the top of my head because I'm not really paying attention. And then you have the big one, Quake Death, the team, like, Deathmatch Classic, which is literally just Quake Deathmatch. But, like, you know, well, not almost quite literally. Hey, look at the light there. I can show that, too. Not quite literally, but you know what I mean. It's almost one-to-one. -one. And we had even more of that connection with the three-wave mod here that wasn't released. And, like, all these maps and stuff. As you can see, Parabot will fuck the door sometimes. Actually, no, it doesn't. Okay, so maybe that's some jank that wasn't resolved when this map was dropped. It's almost done. But you see what I'm saying? Like, there's just so much Quake relation with Half-Life. Like, it's such a direct descendant. I'm not even the first one to bring this up. This is really obvious if you know you're, like, kind of like, you know, game history and stuff. Half-Life is such a, de a descendant of... Please open. Please open. Okay, there we go. I don't know why this game hates me so much. 
But yeah, like, you know, Half-Life is such a pure descend. Where'd you go? I thought I flew you to Narnia or something for a second there. It's such a pure descendant of Half-Life that it's ridiculous. I mean, I've always thought that the Valve games, like, you know, Half-Life, Source... I mean, Gold Source, Source, Source 2, are the most direct descendants of, like, basically, like, you know, the original Quake engine, even more so than anything id put out, because after, like, you know, uh, Quake uh, 2, you know, id kind of... Like, the... Oh, my God! That actually scared me. Um, you know, the way the id engines kind of developed really diverged... From, like, you know, the Quake engine, whereas, like, Source... The Source is still very much, the, like, you know, of the Quake engine. I mean, not literally. It's quite advanced. It's got a lot of new things that didn't have. But, you know, fundamentally, in a lot of ways, it works just like it. So, you know, it's just, it's funny to think, like, you know... You know, Valve's history owes so much to Quake's history that, you know... The early history, especially, more so the... Like, not so much, obviously, the later. But you see what I'm saying here? It's just, they, they, you know, Quake did so much for FPSs. I don't think people really understand just like, you know, like, you know, I brought up games having influence before, but I don't think people really get nowadays just how much like, you know, how many children Quake really has. Like how much long Quake's family tree is. Because you might argue, well, you know, what about Doom and like Wolfenstein 3D and those games that came first, right? And like, you know, their lineages and stuff like that. And you would be correct. I'm not gonna lie. You're gonna be... Uh, you're, you wouldn't be incorrect for assuming, like, you know, the, there's some, like, lineage there, too. But they're not direct, because, you know, the technology d didn't transfer over. The ba the technology in Wolf 3D didn't transfer to Doom, and, the, like, you know, the technology in Doom, you know, with some exception in all cases, didn't really transfer over. I feel the bots are acting a little bit languidly, and I don't know why. Well, me too, I'm kind of tired. It's been a weird day. Anyway, um, you know, the technology didn't directly transfer over a lot of it. Whereas when Quake came, like, Quake came out here, and, like, the Quake 2 runs on, like, the engine for Quake 2 runs on a directly upgraded version of the Quake 1 engine. And even if, like, you know, some of the technology was broken between Quake 2 and Quake 3, you know, there is some overlap there. You gar I guarantee it. It's highly advanced. But, you know, especially then you had, like, you know, a lot of games directly kind of, like, you know, see what, like, Quake was doing and kind of copy it verbatim. In terms of, like, rendering technology and stuff at the time. Or maybe not really, but, you know, you see what I'm saying here is that... You know, Doom and Wolfenstein 3D are obviously important. But just the amount of, like, impact, like, the Quake engine and, like, 3D, like, you know... Influence it had is just really hard to overst like, understate. Or overstate. I, I don't really know what the word I'm trying to look for here is. I don't even know if the point I'm trying to make makes any sense, you know? I mean, obviously, if you try to stay in this one area, you're gonna have a lot of weapons at your disposal. I mean, you won't have the explosive weapons or anything, but, you know... You know, it's not a bad idea to hang out there for a little- Oh my god! Sweet Jesus! Never- Let a, like, a sleeping, ne like, Neko Arc creature with a quad damage lie. Or, what was the metaphor? Never mind. Get away from me! I don't have your purse! Uh, don't you just love it with the person you just killed spawns behind you? Love that, like, you know, spawn RNG. Well, it's all good, because I killed a detonator twice in a row there, so...